you know, as you know, we have, we're teaching, I'm co-teaching it with uh, Howie Rosen, which creates a wonderful complement because he has quite extensive experience in biotech and the more the engineering and process aspects. I have more experience in catalytic chemistry, a little bit in pharmaceutical manufacturing, more in energy and petrochemical. And so we are, we are really a very interesting complement. And we bring that complement to the, to the course. Um, and as he will probably tell you in another interview that I hope you do with him, uh, we will be covering some of the actual mechanical aspects of, of identifying opportunities, creating opportunities, and, uh, and pitching opportunities. And, uh, and, and the, the key challenges from, a, from an operational standpoint to build a company. Uh, my interest happens to lie on the entrepreneur himself and what I had to live through and experience as I grew our companies. And so I'm talking a little bit more about leadership, entrepreneurial leadership, the difference between leadership and management, how to, how to get into the the inner anchor that is necessary in order to be a good executive and a good entrepreneur. So I think it'll be a nice compliment. And for the students that are at Stanford uh, locally who are not yet as our other students already established in their career, what we hope to provide is a flavor of what it is like to be an entrepreneur so that when they reach the, the decision points in their in their journey, they have a little more appreciation of what that particular pathway embodies and, uh, and can, can pick the right, right path. So we're going to be covering a range of things. It's really meant to be an introductory course. You could take a whole course in any one of the topics we're going to cover. But basically, we're going to cover a little bit of business basics. So we don't assume that people have any business training. So we'll, we'll do a little bit of that. And then we're going to talk about how you think about a business and specifically for a certain idea, how you actually um, evaluate that and figure out if it's a good idea. And then we'll move on to once you've gotten comfortable with, OK, I've got an idea that I think I could really build a business about, what are the aspects of building that business and putting the company together, funding it, um, issues with getting the right resources, both people and other things. And then we'll also cover uh, the leadership issues involved in entrepreneurial environments and um, end up with a little bit on careers and how all this fits into decisions you might have. There are two, two aspects to this. One, I know from my experience with larger companies, both when I was part of them and when I interacted with them, that there is a an eagerness, if you will, to see how activities in the larger companies can become more entrepreneurial. And that is, that's a serious question, okay? And I believe the answer is it can. And so I think those in larger companies that are part of our program here who are involved in innovation activities, whether they are discovery, uh, new discovery, scientific or engineering, or are actually innovation in marketing and other places. I think some of the concepts we talk about, I think will be interesting for them to at least appreciate and maybe draw on. That's one piece. But the other piece is that, um, as I said earlier, inevitably larger companies benefit from the innovative juices of entrepreneurial companies. And to the extent that executives in larger companies are dealing with entrepreneurs, have to figure out how to work with them or maybe even convince them to sell their, their companies or license their technology, it's helpful for them to have an appreciation of what an entrepreneurial life is all about and what we have to do to get through it. And that appreciation will work both ways because it'll make it easier for us as entrepreneurs to have a, an, a sympathetic ear, okay, or an empathetic, an empathetic partner 
in the, in the corporation. So that collaboration is a win-win and is more effective. So I would say uh, anybody who is at a, let's say a, a senior level, maybe executive level or a senior management level that is involved with uh, these type of activities, hopefully will, will benefit from our course. Yeah, so we've, we've um, uh, Ricardo and I have decided to specifically focus on engineering and science-based industries. So if you want to develop the next app and um, sell it for a lot of money in the next 18 months, this is not the class for you. Um, so we're, we're really focusing on uh, industries that require uh, significant investment to get things started, uh, take longer time, have a lot of, as I mentioned, engineering and sort of science content, uh, requires a lot of different disciplines to actually get things um, done, typically involves patenting things or proprietary information. And um, it can be appropriate for um, people who have BS degrees or masters or PhDs or perhaps MD degrees. And whether you're thinking of doing something um, entrepreneurial in terms of starting a company or getting involved in a small company, or as um, Ricardo mentioned, if you're in a larger company, a lot of you may be in a role where you're interacting with smaller companies. And so appreciating and understanding their environment and need can be helpful. And then also, um, there's lots of opportunities to be an entrepreneur. So within a larger company, um, to get something started or maybe have an assignment where you're starting a new business. Exactly, exactly. And I think that it, it's a very interesting question of how do you inject entrepreneurship into a larger companies within the framework of a larger company. And we, Howie and I will be talking about that since we both have have experienced dealing with larger companies over the last two or three decades. So, and, and, there's, and it's a continuous learning. So hopefully, actually, I hope that the, the participants will actually um, also contribute to that dialogue. And so we'll all learn something about that. Yeah, if there's, if there's one thing, it's that um, being an entrepreneur isn't any riskier than not being an entrepreneur. So that's my one thing. Okay. It's, everyone always thinks it's so risky to be an entrepreneur, but uh, I think it's just as risky not to be. I think it is the ability to reach out into many different circumstances and different people. And, and in a sense, the virtual learning is becoming not just unidirectional. There is interplay, there is interaction, there is visual. So I think the power of that is just getting outside of our geographic area. For me, virtual learning, the key thing is the fact that you can do it whenever you want, um, wherever you want and um, you know, at a pace you want to. So I mentioned that uh, I have twins who are nine years old, and they still don't understand the concept of broadcast TV. To them, uh, TV is something that you uh, watch when you want to. Uh, you watch what you want to, when you want to. You can stop it in the middle for a potty break or you know, to do an errand for mom or dad or whatever. Um, and uh, to them, that's the way the world should be. And, and even more so now, they'll do that on their iPads as well as sitting in front of a, uh, you know, a TV that's mounted on the wall. So it's really that flexibility and the ability to access things um, more easily without having to actually you know, physically be present. And what's so wonderful about being able to offer a course that is, in a sense, long distance or virtual is that it, um, it allows really reaching out much beyond just the geographic zone with the kind of things that those of us who decided to come and live here have had the benefit of.